Today we're here with Dr. John Bigby, who is a professor in the Department of Anatomy and Neurobiology. Uh, Dr. Bigby, will you take a few minutes and tell us about yourself and your role here at VCU? Sure, my pleasure. Um, so yeah, I'm, I am a professor of anatomy and neurobiology. I'm also the director of the, the neuroscience graduate program. I've, I've taught histology in the medical graduate dental curriculum. Um, essentially since the mid-90s. I was a course director for the medical histology course from 1996 to 2013. And I was it was my privilege to be part of the design committee for the, our new curriculum. And I served as a course master for the first couple of years um, for the first semester. And currently I'm sort of the overseer, the director, the coordinator of the M1 and M2 histology course. Um, so I, we, we actually are, we do get to see the students for the full 18 months of their preclinical pre time mm -hmm. because we have histology scattered throughout the whole curriculum. So we get to see them throughout that whole thing. So I've been here, yeah, I've been doing this teaching for a long time. I love it. I love the histology. I just, I'm happy that this the, we're still in the curriculum. Unfortunately, histology is it's not taught on the boards. It's 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 not one of these things that the students have they're going to have a lot of questions for. But right. um, those that are enjoying it, it, that's the thrill. So I do enjoy that. So speaking of histology, I understand you are converting your educational resource digital histology to an open educational resource. How did digital histology work in the past and how will it change with the conversion to an open educational resource? Okay, well, along with my colleague, uh, Dolly Pakawar, um, who is retired now, um, during the 90s when the curriculum was, was reducing in, uh, in time, primarily the, the laboratories, because histology used to have tons and tons of time in the lab, um, we developed this digital histology package as a an alternative to the laboratory time. So as the microscope labs were decreasing in time, we gave them this interactive digital atlas, which we call digital histology, which grew and grew and grew over over the uh, those numbers of years to kind of replace that. So we maintained the lecture presence in the course, but Essentially, the laboratory portion got totally replaced by digital histology. And we were very fortunate to have people in the uh, instructional services, uh, Chris Stevens and John Priestley, who helped us with authoring this in a program called AuthorWare. Um, we were also fortunate to have it published by uh, Wiley. There were two editions of digital histology that were wow. offered on the, on the market. What what we told Wiley, which apparently I understand now is a rather unusual situation, we told Wiley that we wanted nothing to do with their contract if we couldn't maintain free uh, use of the program for our students. I mean, this was developed as part of VCU, and I just was not going to turn around and say, now our students have to pay for this. We're going to charge the rest of the world, but we're not going to charge our students. So it was, it, we're going along like that. And then we really came to the realization that trying to change our program, trying to change it was just the, the author where the original authoring software was totally insufficient. It was way out of its league, never meant to do something this big. So we thought, how can we keep this, this alive, this digital histology that by this time we put in over 10 years, almost 15 years of work. And so that's where I hooked up with Ken Foster in faculty support. And then he also hooked me up, hooked us up with Tom Woodward in the alt lab. And we came up with a, a way to essentially give histology, digital histology life by creating this in Rampages. Okay. And Rampages is a blog site, right? It's, it's a blog site. It's also apparently the I, you know, because one one concern we had about this is that if we were going to redesign this whole package, that we do it in something that has legs, that's going to be here 10, 15 years from now. We didn't want to, you know, come up with a new package and then put it in a software 
that goes out of date like the previous one. So we wanted to do something that would last. And we've been assured that over half of the, the uh, commercial websites are authored in, um, in WordPress. Which is the engine that powers the Rampages. Right. Okay, okay. So, the, and the fact, so, the fact that so many, uh, websites are, are, uh, using WordPress, that it, it, even if something happened to it, there's so many people that depend on it, that it, it's essentially going to be around a lot longer. Right. So, that gave us confidence that going forward and developing it in the, uh, WordPress format was going to give it all the functionality and all of the all the life it needed to keep going. That's awesome. Now I can gather from what you've said that open educational resources are often made available online. Can you describe what your concept of what they are and um, how they may affect learning and the learning environment? Well I think what it does is that it breaks down any kind it, it, it makes available for students the the con you know content that's much more diverse and it's also coming from a lot of sources that maybe are doing this for other than a profit motive so when we so we had our digital histology and we were going to develop it that way we had to come to the we had to decide are we going to offer this as a product or are we going to do open educational re uh, resource and I got instructed on all of that with, by Tom and Ken, and, and it just seemed like that was the better way to go. I mean, we had digital histology with Wiley on the market for a number of years, and this was not something that we were going to retire on, you know. And I, I, so we just decided that with all the attendant hassles of a commercial product and all of the benefits of an OER, that it was a no-brainer to not have this this resource not be open educational resource yeah. um, and so be, we had we, you know we were fortunate because we had the, the the support of people we had a place to put it and so this this allows this allows us as educators to be able to have our package out there that is infinitely editable the uh, format that we have it in allows us to edit this thing uh, on a whim Wow. Which, that's good news and bad news because yeah. the work, well, it's not work because for me it's not work. I love it. I love to play with this. And so I will play with this almost as entertainment. Right. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> and I'm sure the students love your commitment at that level. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> now, has has it become available to students? Yes. And if so, oh, great. Yes. What have they said? We made it. So we so they had been using the old digital methodology, which was a very small screen, limited resolution, limited functionality product for them to use. We for our students, they had they had had it for free since we had it. Okay. Now with the, with the new and improved version, we made it available to them um, last, so the, f the spring of 2019. So that's when I gave the students the website for digital histology. And I said, you, you can still use the old one, but here's the new one. It's better images, it's all better edited, you're gonna, you can, and importantly, what this allowed us to let that, let it be used on their mobile devices. Ah. So it's usable on on phones and and tablets, not just their computers. Most I did a poll of the students. Most do use it on their laptops, okay. or their desktops. Um, what I'm planning to do this fall is to announce it through some uh, listservs that I have a couple okay. of, of educational listservs to just let people know this is a free resource available for your students. I didn't want to broadcast that until we were just real, everything was polished and everything right. was ready to go. With absolutely no advertising or anything, we, there were, they were gathering statistics on the site. And I think we've reached wow. probably about 40 countries now. So we don't know absolute numbers. Most of the hits to the site are coming from our students. And I know that because it will track, uh, this is so funny to look at, it will track usage. Mm -hmm. And so you see this going along kind of flat line, and then you see these peaks show up, then a flat line, then a peak show up. So I went back and I, lay, and I layered on top of that the calendar of exams. <laughs> <laughs> 
and it lines up perfectly. Interesting. So the, the students, peaks right before the exams. Mm -hmm, yeah, <laughs> starts to ramp up a little bit before, and that's perfect. I mean, that's what you would expect. The students are preparing for an exam, so they go to their resource um, to use it. So we've got we've got good good in house feedback from students. They like it. Um, they prefer it. And um, from worldwide, anyway, we've there are people looking at it, and it's basically done by word of mouth because we haven't told really anybody that it's out there. But if you if but it has its own domain name, so it's digitalhistology.com. Wow, that's and awesome. I don't like it to say .com because it's <laughs> not a commercial product. Right. But I, talking with Tom and talking with Ken, they said that's what you do. So if you Google digitalhistology.com you'll get, it'll take you right to our site. That's great. Now, along the way, have you faced any challenges? And, and how might you have overcome them? I think that the, one of the big challenges we had, what took us the longest, is what do what is our template? What is the design for how we want to make this OER? How do we want to make this resource? For, we, we did have what the old digital histology looked like. But since we can't just take that and plunk it into the middle of WordPress. Um, how do we change this? And this, this is the, the genius, I think, of Tom Woodward, who was literally able to take our vision and his knowledge of WordPress and make those two things work together. Right. And he's constantly making changes as we come up and say, can you do this? Can you do that? Can we want to do this? We want to do that. And I can, you know, he, he I'm sh I can hear him cuts kind of rolling his eyes going, here they go again. Um, but oh. so it takes, it, if you want to do this, it takes a dedicated, very knowledgeable person to help you with making it happen. So if you're, if you're building this in a software package that has functionality to it, you want to have, if, unless you are, you need someone who can really step up and help you with that. So I think designing this, designing this interface was, was really critical. So that, I think, was the most difficult challenge to okay. overcome, was, was making sure we had that, because we had the content. Right. But that, well, there was an, also another issue, because most, all the old content that we had was not immediately applicable or, or uh, transferable to the, the new package. We needed to redo all the images. Okay. We needed to redo all of the labels. All everything had to be redone. It's not a trivial investment in time, but like I say, I maybe I'm just I just weird, but I I, I love it. I really enjoy it. I yeah. I don't even I can't even I I'm I wouldn't even want to write down the number of hours I spend because it's like get a life. Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> but I I really do I really do enjoy this and the product has turned out so nice. You you do have to be able to find all of the resources that you can use that are open educational resource. Right. And a lot of our images I just went back to the microscope and shot them again. Okay, so that you knew you had the rights to that image. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we wrote the words so they were our words. Yeah. And it, it was nice that that Wiley just unconditionally gave us the entire copyright back. Wow. That's really awesome. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, for another faculty member who might be interested in developing an open educational resource for their course um, or exploring an opportunity like that, where, where would you recommend they begin? Talk to somebody like me. <laughs> <laughs> listen to your listen to our discussion. Make sure you can talk to people like Ken Warren, mm -hmm. um, instructional technologist. Yes, you don't just want to just plow into it because you, you certainly can. A lot of this stuff you can just do on your own. If you really want it to be cohesive and you want it to look like a a product mm -hmm. rather than just a whole lot of pieces, having somebody that that's kind of been there, done that, and has a has an as a vision of how to make it happen and what platforms are good to to work on would be a good place to start. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. Well, my last question is, is about um, the keys to success. Did you discover any as you were developing this open educational resource? 
a, hopefully it's a success. We, it sounds we, to me like it's we, already we, we, headed we, that direction. We feel like it's a success. You have to have a clear vision on what you want it to be. And you have to have good support. As a faculty member, I'm, I'm forever indebted to my chair, John Pavlishok, for supporting this whole thing. I spend a lot of time on this. So you want to make sure that you've got the support of your administrative unit for the time that it's going to take. You have a clear vision on what you want to do, and you have the technical team kind of along with you. Those are kind of the, the three legs of the stool. The stool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so very much for sharing your wisdom and your experience with this process. I believe that our listeners have probably gotten a lot out of our conversation. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. It's it's a wonderful it's a wonderful day that we have this resource. Excellent.